<laughs> Gonna have to wait another week or so for that. Yep. I'm still waiting. Yep. Um... Oh, black screen. Probably a nice ad coming through here. Nope, see yep, you. Yep, I see myself. Yep. Just waiting. Uh, and I got audio, so we are on. All right. Ready? Yep, go ahead. Um, Hello, and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. My name is Adam. I'm the Community Manager of Franchise Hockey. With me, as always, is FHM producer Jeff, who is pictured on your screen. Hey, everybody. And we are back with the 1969-1970 LA Kings. Yep. Uh, coming off a couple of so-so seasons, the nice thing about uh, this season we're going into now, the real Kings were absolutely terrible in 69-70, dead last in the league, uh, 38 points, I think it was. So it'll be hard to do that badly. Uh, no, I, so you never know. I think I just I moved us ahead slightly from where we are last time, but didn't do a lot. Uh, signed a few just depth three agents. Uh, Joe Zanussi, uh, Brian Morenz, who's the nephew or grandnephew, I think, of Howie Morenz. Uh, Wayne Thomas and Goal and Ernie Hick. Uh, nobody that's going to help out immediately, uh, well, with the possible exception of Hick. Uh, but it's just a little bit more uh, depth because we, I think we traded a few guys away for draft picks and whatnot at the end of last year, some of our older guys. So uh, even we're only going to get a couple of guys, I think, out of this uh, draft today. So well, we're uh, better to have gearing up from later drafts, weren't we? Yeah, so the, just the way the works, the way the drafts work in the game. Uh, this particularly the '69 one. Oops, wrong one. Having a look at it right here. Uh, it's not quite the uh, same guys that were in the actual 1969 draft because they allowed a few 19-year-olds to be taken that year. Uh, we can't do a partial draft in the game like that this uh, right now. So it's uh, all 20-year-olds, so it's thin to pull out a little bit, but that'll actually mean the 70 draft, which will be next year, which we've picked up three first-rounders for. I think we've got, uh, what is it, ours, Philadelphia's, and Chicago's, I think? It sounds very close to that, yeah. That'll be full of guys. I think Bob Clark is in there. Uh, is that the Lafleur year? I don't think so. Not quite. Oh no, yeah, it's seventy. So it'll be Gilbert Perrault because we'll be. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be the Sabers in the Canucks expansion uh, next year. But anyhow, we yes. are on the uh, nineteen sixty-nine draft page. We're picking fourth overall because we didn't do too badly. Made the playoffs last year. Uh, didn't go very far, but uh, we're probably going to get, I'm hoping for Guy Chiron because uh, not that great of a defensive player, but uh, can contribute some offense for us fairly quickly because we desperately need that at center. Yes. Uh, but worst case, we're going to get a guy, we are going to get somebody who can contribute this year and will eventually be three, three and a half stars at least. So I might as well just kick this off and... Uh, Let's just go one pick at a time for these first few. Blues picking first, and they take Mark Tardif. Not a surprise. Probably the best player available. Uh, Flyers going next. Dave Burrows, second best. So everything pretty much going towards going in order of the potential uh, ratings so far. Uh, Philadelphia up next. Oh, sorry, that was Pittsburgh, who drafted Burrows, who actually wound up with uh, Pittsburgh in real life. And Flyers also going by potential. Jean Potvin, brother of Denny. So that leaves Guy Chiron for us, which is pretty much perfect. So I'm obviously taking that one. Even if you've got a couple of uh, Jets coaches, uh, future <laughs> Jets coaches listed next, that you probably want to grab. Barry Long, Rick Dudley. Uh, I'm okay with some of those. But we'll get Sharon and see if he does a little better. I mean, poor guy in his real career was stuck with Kansas City or with Detroit when they were in their kind of declining years after Howe retired and then wound up in Kansas City in one expansion draft uh, in the expansion draft then got traded to Washington. So sort of one terrible team after the, uh, after the other, even though the guy was putting up 70, 80 points a year. And yeah. I'll just run this through the next round. So I don't think we're going to get any beginning... Anybody that highly rated uh, after the first round? 
and yeah, we're picking 16th overall. Oh boy. So we got a couple of one and a half star guys. JP Bortolo, uh, kind of a third line winger. Greg Body, who had a cup of coffee with the Canucks in the mid 70s. Uh, like a number six defenseman at best. And we got a few uh, goalies, though. Um, Jim Rutherford, future hmm. Hurricane GM and Penguins GM. Uh, Gilles Gilbert. The only problem is we've got a, we've got we're pretty much set in goal, so it's kind of a waste to take on. I mean Wayne Thomas, we just signed him as a free agent. He's I think three star rating, which is better than any of these guys. I'm wondering. Is, uh, go ahead. JP Burrow available? Bordalo? Yep. Yeah, sorry. He might be our best bet. Yeah, that's uh, for a guy who can come in and contribute. Rather have his brother Christian, who was a pretty good player for the Canucks, but I mean he was a like good hawk uh, three or four fourth liner for most of the 70s so yeah i think i'll go with him now, who is who's jim boy don't recognize the name now nah, bordel is probably the safer pick i'm gonna go with him and our next pick coming up in this yeah it looks like we're still got a third rounder and we're getting into the questionable guys here now and i'm just basically going on name at this point uh Probably, well, Bob Girard was an okay winger for Cleveland and Washington for a while. Uh, yeah, I don't recognize much else here at all. Mike Baumgartner available? Yeah. Mike Baumgartner, yeah. Don't think it's any relation to Ken. Yeah, he's in there. Oh, Willie Brossert. Uh, he was, I think, a flyer for a little while, maybe in the WHA. He's probably the top. Yeah, he's still he's got a one star rating right now, so I'll probably go for him. Uh, okay. And a few other random goalies, like Gary Ennis, who's an okay goalie for Pittsburgh and Washington. But yeah, no, I think it's got to be Rossert. Don't think he's ever going to make our team, though. And we got one more left. Uh, Bruce McIntosh. Don't know anything at all about him. But he's rated way better than anybody else here, so let's go with that. And that will probably be up that ends the draft. Oops. So going over to our unsigned draftees list. Uh, just going to switch the view to reading screen. We definitely want to sign Sharon right away. And he wants a five-year deal. Remember, this is before entry-level contract, so we can get him locked in for a relatively cheap amount uh, early on. So I'm going to do that. Which is good. We need yep. some. Um, Bordelo, yeah, well, he sees one and a half stars already, so he may be able to play for us next year, so I can try that. And he wants a cheap contract, so that's good as well. I um, guess might as well try and sign the other two. I don't see any reason not to. Because, yeah, Macintosh wants next to nothing. I think that's a minimum salary. And Brossert wants slightly more than next to nothing, so... You can have that too. And that puts us, uh, that'll be four guys, so we're still 10 players short of the contract, uh, 50 contract limit. And I think other than that, uh, I'm just gonna advance a couple of days because I think I've still got one, and just see how these contracts turn out. Sharon assigned, Macintosh assigned. Uh, John Grisdale, who, was, who I was trying to sign, uh, looks like he signed with Montreal. Oh, and we got one guy still on the injured list, uh, Brian Campbell, so I'll move him back to the active roster. Okay, McIntosh Brosser signed. I think that's the last two. And, yeah, there we go. It looks like, uh, Sharon, we're starting to get the makings of a decent first and second decent. line. We're just, we really need a left wing. We got okay centers and okay right wings for the first couple of lines, two and a half stars, but God, I don't want to put 
Well, I guess we can kind of hope Bob Barry improves in training camp. Yeah, I don't want to have uh, go back with Glenn Sather on my first wing. <laughs> I'm just looking to see if there's anyone of interest we could maybe try and pick up. And yeah, just having a quick look at the uh, free agent list. Yeah, it's been pretty much cleaned out. Okay, so I will run that up to start of the preseason, okay. I guess. Uh, oh, what? Rod Gilbert is Gilbert? on. Sorry, Rod Gilbert is on the trade block. Oh, from the Rangers. Yeah, that is interesting. At least he is in this save a few days I have. Um, so yeah, if we're looking for a left wing. Oh, they put him on left wing. He was a right wing in real life. But no, yeah, he is actually... I wonder how that happened. I'm not going to complain. Also, Pete Parise is also on the trade block. But yeah, I mean, Jobert's only 28 in this. He's got a... He was good through, like, the mid-late 70s. I mean, this, let's see if I can make them an offer of... Maybe give them a couple of younger guys. Uh... Try Hammerstrom, who's two and a half stars, and hmm. try Simon Nolle, but I don't think uh, they're going to go for that. Yeah, I'll just advance day by day for. Nope, no way they want that. Any other ideas for trying to get him out of the Rangers? I'm just playing around with a little bit, see if I can. If I throw in Schuberg, he hasn't really developed the way I'd hoped. That's, I was kind of looking at him and Inger Hammerston. And a second round pick. And again, they're saying no way. So, yeah, I think they're, they're, asking, they're probably going to be asking for more than we can afford here. I'll try throwing in. I think we got a third rounder from somebody. Or, well, we got Minnesota's second rounder next year. I'm going to throw that back in if they want that. If they'll take that, good. Um, oh, wait. Did I submit that? I don't think I did. There we go. Try that again. That's interesting what's up i yeah. uh, can't see the 1970 draft picks uh they well, that won't come up until uh but i can see 71 draft picks 71 oh that's weird are you yeah. sure it's 71 or it's just showing the 71 rules that's it's, that's the way they're named that no there's no net are all of our first rounders from next year are not there Hmm. Them, so that's it. Hmm. I'll go. I'll be up to that in this minute. I'll see uh, what's going on there. But the Rangers turned that down, so I'm just going to let that go and run us up to the start of the preseason. Well, what if we tried for JP Parise? Just he's three stars. He, he was just. I can't get him in mind because he was just traded. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's see what happened in the off season. Nothing interrupted us, at least. Uh, our training camp development. Uh, Bordalo did really well. Sharon did really well. Dennis Kern's big step forward, so hopefully he's up to uh, at least one and a half stars now. Wow, McIntosh, uh, that guy I didn't know anything about. And then our fourth rounder uh, developed like uh, pretty much across the board. Great. And other than that, yeah, nobody going downhill. Um... Not seeing our big names getting much in the way of development, but a lot of the younger guys did. Let's take a look at the roster and see what we got here. Ah, Kern's unfortunately still one star. Yeah, it doesn't really look like much change there on the, at least on our active players. Let me go through and look at the farm. Yeah, not a lot different there either. I think Moran's got an extra... 
uh, half star. Gonna call up a couple okay. of guys just to uh, look at them, how they fit into the roster before I send players down. Okay, so I've got to roster nine guys I've got to send down. Want to trim the defense down to seven, so Brosser definitely goes down. As does Ray McKay. Yeah, McIntosh actually made it to one and a half stars. He jumped over a couple of the our younger or the guys that we had playing full time last year. Um, Schubert's the only one star, so I'm gonna have to start him in the minors. Kind of disappointing because he was supposed to be one of our better guys. And well, I guess he say he didn't peak till like the mid 70s, so he's got a little room Did to develop yet. Anybody show up to training camp out of shape? Nobody. So that's a little bit of good news, at least. So what hap So what happens when that? Because you will get an email, or sorry, something in your inbox. Yeah, it, it, it affects his fatigue for the start of the season. I can't remember exactly how long that lasts, but it'll. Uh, he won't uh, have the uh, his fitness rating will be lower, and I think it uh, hurts his stamina too out of the, uh, until it uh, goes away. Okay. Does the options of criticizing him change anything? Um, maybe. I can't. I think that uh, it, it can affect his mood. Can't remember offhand. Uh, we had that last year. I don't remember what the what what the exact effects were for uh, criticizing him. Okay. And Morens can go down to the minors. Uh, another center we probably got to send down. Looks like Inglis is probably going to be the best option here. I mean, the good good news here is we're being able to push some guys down who were playing full time for us last year. Uh, yeah, especially ship. guys who are not. Yeah. Bob Kelly can go down. I need to cut three more guys here. Another forward, I think. Mickey or Nolet? Did you get rid of them? Nolet, uh, he's... Well, he's one and a half stars. Uh, I'd have to move somebody over. I'm kind of thin on the, both wings. i got to get at least one more center down. I think that's going to be either Bob Leiter or Brian Campbell. Campbell's a 16 rated on left wing. Yeah, I think that's going to be lighter. Another thing we've got to be thinking of uh, down the road is uh, we're going to lose some guys in the expansion draft to Buffalo and Vancouver uh, in the next off season. But I mean, yeah. I don't think we've got enough <laughs> the players just aren't good enough to worry about that yet. And I think I'm actually going to have to send Dennis Kearns to the minors after he played a full season for us last year. Because uh, Macintosh has developed well enough that he's a seventh defenseman now. So that's a nice surprise out of the little around uh, pick. And one more forward has got to go down. Looks like it's going to have to be Hammerstrom. So that's down to 23. Let me just see what the... We're not going to change the tactics any. Oops, forgot to... Uh, no, what are our current tactics, though? I'll flip over to those in a second, but... Oh, Ernie Hick, who signed as a free agent in the offseason, got up to two stars, so that's good news. That gives us a little more depth. Oh, and Bob Barry, wow, I didn't notice that. I went from one and a half stars to two and a half stars, so we finally got a semi-legitimate uh, first-line left wing. So the tactics, which we switched to uh, midway through last year, if I remember right, uh, collapsing to the net defensively in the Shiro system on offense. So it's a little early for that, and we probably got we got to th be thinking at some point about picking up a uh, much better tough guy. We've got J. Bob Kelly down in the minors, but he's hasn't really developed that much. So we got to be looking for a guy who can uh, do a lot of fighting for us, uh, either free agent wise. I'll have a look at that in a second. Or maybe in the draft next year. And I'm just going to see what the uh, AI... Oh, wow. The AI doesn't want to put uh, Barry on the first line. I'm going to swap that around. 
Okay, while you do that, there's a question in the chat from Sharpies who says, yep. thanks for all the help with the timely responses. Sorry if I missed this earlier in the cast, but confirming my WHA question, when the WHA comes into existence, they draft first, but will we have a chance to overpay for the guys we draft? Uh, it really depends on the individual year. Some years the WHA is going to be drafting guys that are a year younger than the NHL is. So you wouldn't have the chance to do that until uh, they or, I mean, the WHA gets a, you know, a year's jump on negotiating with those guys. But uh, assuming it's the same age, yeah, they, I mean, they draft right around the same time. So it'll be basically a bidding war for those players, which the NHL will be in slightly better position for. Uh, what was I, oh, I was going to look for a goon in the free agents, which is... Not that likely... Um, Looking for obvious names. Nobody I really recognize here. And I think we have most of these guys scouted, do we? Uh, I think not so. any useful amount, no. No? Okay. Oh, we've got, oh no, we do have, no, we do. I'm wrong. So, Cam Allison. Uh, don't think he ever amounted to anything in real life. That's about the only real uh, fighter we've got there. What's his... Yeah, aggressiveness is only 14 for him, so he's not going to make much for Goon. I think we're going to have to wait another season or two for the real heavy-duty guys to show up. Fair enough. And I believe... I'm just making sure I've got... Uh, I'm going to flip the scouting back to assistant, just so I don't have to keep up with that. Normally, if I was playing in a modern game, I'd probably do that myself, but uh, in this it's easy because I remember most of these guys, so it's a little easier to just do it, man, just go by name. Okay, uh... oh, I got a game against St. Louis today. Just take a quick look at how our first exhibition game goes. Simming it. And a one nothing shutout for St. Louis. We had a bunch of fights in the first period. Oh, that's great. Uh, third period, our captain Terry Harper takes a penalty. Uh, 45 seconds later, gets out of the box, takes another penalty. Or gets out after 45 seconds after getting out of the box, gets another penalty, gets out of that, and then two minutes later takes a third penalty. Tell me they didn't, mm. or at least they didn't score at any of that. Wait, I don't think. Oh no, they did. Renny Robe, that's where they got the winner because uh, he was sitting in the penalty box. So nice going, Captain. Lovely. And playing against the Flyers, send that one as well. 5-3 win for us. And one thing I want to keep an eye on during training camp is my goalies' uh, hot-cold ratings, because we'd like to get at least one of those raised up a little bit before we start the season. It's going to drop, it should drop back slightly uh, before the season starts. But I'll give this, actually I'm going to let the AI try, we'll see what happens with Hick on the first line. And we lose 5-2 to two when I let the AI choose the lines. So I'm going to swap out a couple of guys since it is uh, still <laughs> preseason and get a little playing time for Campbell and Selby and uh, Nole, I guess. Uh, and yeah, still no hot goalies yet. Gonna take a quick look at uh, free agent center, see if anybody interesting has popped up. But no, it's even worse than before. There's nobody down there at all. Well, that's disappointing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the 70s. It's not like there were guys moving around being free uh, via free agency. Yeah. 
And now we lose 4-1 to the Flyers, so preseason not going that great so far. Oops. Speaking of... And 5-2 win over the Leafs. Uh, one thing I just mentioned there, Rogi Vashon is now in Toronto. He got traded from Montreal after Burry being buried in the minors for a few years. What were you going to say, speaking of? I was going to say, uh, what's your feeling on Chicago getting swept in the first round of the playoffs? Yeah, I can't believe that. Uh, I don't think anybody saw that one coming. No. And is, no. I think, did Nashville, uh, they were up 2 nothing last I saw tonight, uh, so. That was last I saw 2 nothing. Uh, actually, it looks like it's uh, 3, just letting it update now. Come on, 3-1. Three, 3-1 one. Three, one Nashville, so. I guess they were holding something back for the playoffs this year. Well, P.K. Subban had the first two goals. Uh, yeah, question I mean, from the chat. Cherpier. Well, that was a nasty injury by Fiala. Yes, he went into the boards very awkwardly. But uh, Cherpier's asked, how do you feel about Green being hired in Vancouver? Oh, happy enough with it. I was a little worried when they said they were looking at Ralph Kruger. Because I couldn't, I don't know why you would want to do that. Uh, didn't work out for the Oilers. It wasn't going to do anything for us. But yeah, I mean, it's I, the available choices. Yeah. Cougar got thrown under the bus. No, so everybody gets thrown under the bus in Edmonton if you're not part of the old boys club. <laughs> well, pretty much, yes. Okay, we must be getting near the end of the exhibition season here. One more game against Montreal. We'll shuffle the lineup around slightly for that one. Still no hot goalies at all. That's disappointing. Sounds a lot like the Red Wings campaign. Yeah, we couldn't get them going uh, on great Gary Dornhofer. Our second best winger is out for a couple of weeks. Okay, hopefully at least Cheevers can get a decent game in here so we can get off to a better start. Uh, we lose 2-1. to one. So that was kind of a mess of an exhibition season. And no hot goalies. Uh, I'm going to shuffle this back to uh, our best players for the start of the season. Let's see what the AI, AI wants to do first. Defensively, that makes sense. Um, okay, Britt Selby sits down. Campbell, I mean, a couple of guys who were second liners for us last year have been pushed out. The only thing I'm going to change, I think, is swapping Mickey for Nole. And that strange thing it wants to do with the first line. So Bob Berry goes up there. And Gisharan can start on the actual shuffle. We'll put Sather down on the third and make him play a little bit tougher, I think. Okay, so we open the year against, uh, against Montreal. We played the last exhibition game against. Nobody getting waived. Uh, and season preview, did we get anybody mentioned uh, from us? Oh, there we go. Uh, Jerry Cheevers is now apparently in the top three goalies in the league. Oh, that's good. Oh, and he's, uh, he is up to four stars. Uh, even better. Guru Creative in the chat says, I just noticed you can only dress 18 players? Yep, uh, didn't I can't remember the exact uh, year the rule changed, but it goes up to 19, and, and I think it changes to 20, not until 82, 83, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, say that one more time. It went up to 19 sometime in the 70s, and then it went to 20 in the uh, 82, I think it is. Yeah, that sounds right. 
took quite a while before it actually got to where it, most people recognize and it. just simmed that opener against Montreal and we came out of it with four four tie so it's it against Montreal I'll take that it's a decent start uh Guy Chiron and near Ernie Hick uh, I think both their first NHL games two points each and was Sharon the first star? Oh, Danny Grant from Montreal had three points, so he got first star. Keith Magnuson had a goal and assist for us, second star, so that's not bad. And Dornhofer is day-to-day, -day, so I'm just going to go one day at a time until I get him back. Set that up, and then I'm probably going to run this uh, for a month or so. But he's not back in time for the Blues. And we lose 3-1 in St. Louis. Come on, he's... How long is he going to be day-to-day? -day? Until the end of time. No, who knows. And, oh, J.P. Perizet, who you were trying to get uh, in the offseason, uh, four assists for the Red Wings. Okay, it's Oakland. We better win this one. 5-1 loss. Hey, hey, hey. That's rough. And I saw one of the goals was by Barry Long, who I didn't take in the draft. And it's back to back against Oakland, so let's try game two. And it looks like we're going to start, they want to start Dave Dryden's back up tonight, and we only lose three to two this time. So, what's that? Are we one and four to start the season? Uh, sounds like it. Or 0 04, 0 03 and 1. Right. The good news is everybody else in the West is uh, pretty awful this year, so we're only one point out of a playoff spot, despite not having a win in the first four games. There we go, Dornhofer back soon. Almost 100%, come on, one more day, but he's still not ready to go. Shake it up slightly by trying the AI's lines against Pittsburgh. And it gets us a three to one win, so first one of the year. Huzzah. Bordalo gets his first NHL goal in the first period. Also good. And I just need to get Dornhofer back here. Oh, that's not great for the Bruins. Uh, Bobby Orr had a 10-game assist streak going, and then he tears, he tears his groin, and he's out for three months. And conveniently enough, guess who we're playing uh, right after that happens? Maybe we should try and trade for Bobby Orr right now. He's hurt. And we get a 6-1 win out of that, uh, <laughs> the Orless Bruins. And I still don't think we could probably give them most of the roster for Orr and not get him. Or offer them, at least. We should try. But, offer them every defenseman we have. But 6-1 win for us. Any day now for Dornhofer. Dornhofer is back, finally. Hello. So I can take the layout. Put Dornhofer in. Adjust my lines. And as much as I don't like having Barry on the third line, Hick is playing really well. Uh, so I guess I'm going to trust the AI to put him there. I do not know why they're pushing Gisharon down to the third line now. i got to switch that. Okay, so the roster is more or less how I want it. I'm just going to let this run. Let's see, we are near the end of October, so I'll give it to the end of the month and then probably go for all of November, too, unless something interesting happens. Development report, uh, pretty good across the board. Macintosh, even more improvement. Hammerstrom finally went up a little bit. Let's see if he 
finally got that one and a half stars. Oh, I got a few guys with one and a half stars on the minor league or in the reserve list slash minor leagues right now. Oh, well, we might need them. Yeah, Kearns is up to one and a half. The goalies are not bad, not bad. But I will let this run all the way through November. Normally we wouldn't go quite this quick, but we're trying to get like a broader view of the Kings' whole history than we normally would. Uh, you know, with the wing, with the uh, Wings game, we're playing in alternate weeks, so we're going pretty much day by day. But in this one, we'll try to move it along a bit quicker. I saw a board conference report somewhere in here. Thought I did. Uh, where the heck is it? Have to do it the hard way. Uh, Owner confidence is still away in the green, so we're pretty happy uh, with that. Job security is okay. Interesting stuff. Sharp is just tells us the Blues tied it up. Wow, really? They were down by two. So they're obviously doing okay. And another development report. Uh, Again, everybody, Macintosh with more develop. Where is that guy coming from? Is he up to two stars yet? One and a half still, but he's got to be getting close. Oh, and Ernie Hick, uh, yeah, the free agent signing in the offseason. Uh, 15 points in 18 games and from one and a half stars to two and a half. So that's a nice surprise. And just looking at our scoring through 20 games, I didn't even look at... Oh, wow, we're 10, 5, and 4 through 19 games. Not bad. So, uh, yeah, going pretty well for us. Uh, Sharon has 20 points, getting a point a game in his rookie season. Yeah, everything looking really nice now. So I am guess I'm assuming we're going to be topping the, uh, yeah, easily the top team in the West. Six points up on the Penguins. And the really good news is the Flyers, whose first round pick we own this year, are dead last. That's why we hedged our bets. And Cheevers is up two on the hotness scale, so not going to touch anything here. I'm just going to let it go for another month. This is working out very well. Let's see, uh, okay, we're losing a few games here. That will take us to January, though? Yeah, right wow, well, we kind of tailed off badly in December, it looks like. I have to take a look at that and uh, change things as we're down to 500 now and guessing we're on. We're still first in the uh, West because the West is terrible. That's all the expansion teams. We're first in the West, but if we were in the East Division, we'd be dead last. <laughs> Lovely. And I guess I'm going to have to make some changes to the lineup here. Yeah, still getting decent scoring out of most of these guys. And game rating wise... Oh, no. J.P. Bordelow, the rookie, is not doing well with the game ratings. Okay. Uh, Sharpies tell us they scored, uh, the Blues scored two goals in 236. And C.S. High 312 says hello, Jeff and Adam. Hey. So hello to you too, C.S. High 312. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Okay, you're going to sit. Don't want to sit out Kurtenbach. Uh, let's bench Glenn Sather for a while, see if that does anything. Oh, and Pappen's hurt. That's not good. He's out for two or three weeks. Yeah. Uh, Never heard of Glenn Sather. <laughs> Oops, I don't want to wave him. I want to put him on the injured list. Happen is out. Uh, no way. Actually, Bortolo can go out too, and No Lay and Mickey go in. And that's really going to have an effect on our lines, I'm guessing. Yeah, Barry goes up the second line. Sharon goes into. Uh, it's not putting curtain back on the second line anymore, and that actually makes a little more sense. Should we take a quick look at the trade block, see if anything interesting, anyone interesting has popped yeah, up? Yeah, I haven't been watching waivers either. Uh, oops. Actually, I'll do it this way. Just 
just going to take a quick scan through all the teams in the league. See Phil Esposito is uh, still with Chicago in this game and uh, putting up a ton of points there with uh, Bobby Hall in the wing. Uh, oh, Doug Mons, the uh, Hawks are trying to move him, but he's declined to one and a half stars, so that's not really worth picking up. Uh, Dean Prentice, another veteran, down to one and a half. Yeah, not a lot of interesting guys on the trading blocks so far. Pat Quinn. Ever hear him? <laughs> no, no. Oh, uh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say the guy. Oh, okay, this is maybe interesting. Uh, Ralph Baxter, who I think uh, got moved to the Kings somewhere in this period from Montreal, is on the trading block and two and a half stars. He's only th he's 32, but might have a little bit of mileage in there, so left in him, so it's one possibility. Uh, the Rangers have taken Rod Gilbert off. Not guessing there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff on the uh, other expansion teams. Perhaps we should try to trade for Gordiao. Uh, let me see if... I mean, at this point he was getting ready to retire, so it's not out of the realm of possibility. Just checking everybody. No, nobody... Uh, the one interesting guy I saw was Backstrom. Howe's still at four stars, so he's going to be pretty much next to impossible to pry out of the wings, but I'm going to try for Backstrom. Right. And I think, I mean, I can afford to give up one of our younger centers for him. Uh, oh, Bob Leiter, we sent down at the start of the year. He hasn't been playing at all. And maybe throw in hmm. looking for somebody with about two and a half stars potential. Nothing. No, I don't want to move Kelly. That's oh Hammerstrom. Let's try him later. What about half. Dave Kearns? Dennis Kearns. Now he's he's still three star potential in mind. Then he's up to one and a half stars. Okay. Ability, so I may actually call him up and uh, swap Macintosh down. But I'm going to try for Leiter and Hammerstrom for Backstrom and see if Montreal, the scout, thinks they'll go for it. And let's just advance this a couple of days. Simming a game against the Flyers that we lose 3 1, so we're now officially below 500. Board conference report is uh, not happy about going 273 in the last month. No, well, neither are we. And up against the Bruins, uh, who, yeah, Orr is still out injured for them, so see if we can come up with another win here. And we do, 6-3. So Boston in the early 70s, or at least late, I don't know, it is the early 70s now by three days. Uh, without Orr and Esposito, not quite as terrifying. Well, yeah. And Montreal is going to go for that Baxton trade, so that's good news. Now we lose a couple of younger guys, but in return we're getting somebody who can probably uh, shore up our third or... Well, so he might even be a second liner for us now that I look at it. And going to send Brian Campbell down to the reserve list. Yes, we can wave him. Oops, got a dress backstrom. Oh. Hmm, who do I want? I think I want to take Lunda out because he hasn't done much offensively this year. Swap Sather back in. And how long is Macintosh? How Mac um, Magnuson is out for a couple. He's got to go with Macintosh. And I will sim the rest of this month. Then we should have most of our injured guys back. And it looks like we started winning again because we've crept uh, above 500. And in the time it took me to say that, we dropped back a little below. And we at least got Jim Papp and our, probably our, maybe our best forward back. 
So he's off the injured list. Uh, Magnuson is close, but uh, we lose our other good center. Katola is out for two to three months, so it's a really good thing we got uh, uh, Backstrom in that trade because we'd have a problem otherwise. Uh, Katola going on the injured list. See how the AI wants to do the uh, lineup. That's where it doesn't want to dress Backstrom. That's not a good idea. Mickey out, Backstrom in. And I think I'm okay with those lines. Just checking the trading deadline. No, it's not till March 10th, so we got another month or so for that. Anything interesting in the news? Bobby Hall seems to be having a great year. How many points is he up to? Wow, 84 points in 45 games for Hall. Hawks must be running away with uh, Eastern Division. Very. Can we look at the point standing? Yeah, I'm just looking at the uh, points leaders right now. Hall is way out in front for points. Ken, looks like he's... Oh, well, the, he had a line is Ken Hodge, Phil Esposito, Bobby Hall. So basically the best of the uh, late 60s, early 70s Bruins and Hawks all on one team. Sounds about right. And do I see any kings anywhere? I do. Oh, Dornhofer has one shorthanded goal, which put, ties him for their number three in the league, and that is about it. Oh, Ed Van Imp, uh, number two in shots blocked. That's, That's what we got him around for. Just saw him. As long as we're hanging on, that's all that's important. I mean, yeah, we're still in first place, actually, in the West, so no issues there. And we're actually a point ahead of Montreal. Well, who's angry on our roster there? Campbell? Uh, oh, yeah, just why is he upset? Not enough playing time. I'm saying he's on the wrong level here, so... Oh, but did I have him sent to the Miners for a little while? I can't remember. Could set him back down anyway. So. Yeah. I should have a look at the reserve list to see if anybody's uh, popped up uh, ratings wise. Oh, Morenz is up one. I'm actually going to call up Brian Morenz and send Campbell down if he's not going to be happy where he is. Although it's probably going to make him even unhappier. If you are unhappy, can you really become more unhappy? And Macintosh can go down as well. Bring up Dennis Kearns since he's at one and a half stars now. Pwog66 in the chat says, Have you ever traded Gretzky to the wing, to wings? Um, don't think I've ever played as any of Gretzky's teams, so nope. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that'd be the toughest one. Playing as the 80s Oilers wouldn't be that fun. Just did not dominate everyone. Yeah, I mean, well, the only thing you can do with the 80s Oilers is see if you can win uh, five cups in a row and not get beaten by Calgary on a fluke goal uh, one year. Or try and trade everyone, I guess, too. <laughs> to the Rangers. Yeah, yeah. Just set up, trade everyone, the Rangers, or see if you can trade the entire team. Okay, Just board is happy one with us. Uh,. Looks like Oakland fired its general manager. Yeah, they're not That's good. not shocking at all. Yeah, Flyers still dead last in the league by pretty by six points, so that's looking good for us. I'd like the Hawks to be a little bit lower, but I don't think that's going to happen. The Rangers are actually giving them a good fight for first place. And we are 19-19-9 at the beginning of February, and Magnuson is off the injured list. I will let that run for the remainder of the month and we'll get us close to the trading deadline and then we're going to have to think about what we want to do here. So uh, now I will just is worth... ahead 4-3 right now. Oh, they're back in front? Okay. Mm -hmm. Development report. Uh, 
Oh, backs from started declining. That's not really what you want to see in a recent trade acquisition. Macintosh continues to get better and miscellaneous other small improvements across the board. And we're dropped, we've dropped down to 22, 25, and 12. Where are we in the standings? We're behind Pittsburgh. We're actually tied with Pittsburgh for first place in the West, so we're going to get into the playoffs. We're just probably going to get killed by uh, whatever Eastern team we run into because we're nine points behind the last place team in the East. And these, the divisions will start to make more sense in another season or two because the league uh, puts Chicago over into the West and we get the expansion teams coming in uh, next year so we're not going to be able to take advantage of the uh, fact that we're in a terrible division forever well. and flyers are still in last also good news but what do you think we do here do we try and uh, pick up another player and make some kind of a playoff run or just be happy what, with, with what we get and take those three first rounders next year and uh, try to contend well. for next season or should we try picking up another first round pick? <laughs> That's not a terrible idea, but uh, PWOG66 in the chat says go to, or he says he's got to run. Yeah. But when I read that, I th think, thought he was telling us to go for it. And <laughs> I, so I think we should go for it. Push for it. Let me have a look through the other teams again, see if there's anything uh, interesting available. I'm looking at maybe Montreal again, or actually Toronto was, uh, I think, out of a playoff spot. Are they trying to move anybody? They don't appear to be. Hmm. And you on the trade block of interest? I'm actually going to take a look through the reserve lists, because uh, even if they're not on the trade block, uh, maybe able to pick up somebody who's been stuck in the minors and they might have undervalued. In the game I'm running simultaneous with yours, J.P. Perez on the trade block. Poor guy's been there all year. Yeah, he got, well, in, in this one, he got traded uh, right uh, at the very beginning of the game. Oh, Minnesota stockpiling goalies. I think what I... I'm not seeing a lot of immediate help from any of these teams. At least on the, at least somebody we like we, that we can grab off the reserve list. But, hmm. I mean, when I'm seeing the number, like, there's a few three and a half, three, three and a half, maybe even four star guys on a few of the older teams. Oh, Jean Pronovos in uh, Boston, uh, one and a half stars right now, four star potential, and he had a uh, real life, he went on to have a 100 point season for the Penguins in the, uh, I think it was about 76 or so. So I'm going to make a trade offer for him. Uh, Boston's got a weakness at center, and we have a few of those. One of whom, uh, Brian Campbell, is really unhappy with us, so... It doesn't, look like the, it doesn't look like the Bruins are going to go for that, though. Uh, what if he threw in a late-round pick? Or we got uh, Cormier, who hasn't really developed for us. I can try that. Hmm, no, the scout doesn't think they're going to go for that at all. I'll try. I have to throw in a draft pick. Try that Minnesota one again. Oh, the Bruins can't uh, take extra players. They've already got 50 guys. Let's take Campbell out. Uh, but I... Oops. Now in and a uh, five-five tie with the Flyers while we wait for a response on that trade. What were you going to say? No, Bruins aren't going to go for that trade. So I'm going to just run this to the trade deadline, and we can get instant responses. Sure. I'm just going to say in uh, my game going, uh, Red Berenson is sitting on the bench, right on the bench. 
Okay, I'll have They're a look Boston. at him. Is, is that is he in St. Louis or is he still in Detroit? He's up in Boston. The one up in, in Boston. In my okay. game. I'm not sure. Five days to the trading deadline. Nothing, nothing tie. When's the last time you saw one of those? Many years ago. <laughs> Cheevers and Gary that. Smith. Nothing, nothing tie. No, Cheevers is on a roll. Two shutouts in a row. We shut out Oakland 5 nothing. He's going to be on fire then, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, creeping back towards 500. He's... Yeah, three, uh, Pete rating is three right now. And another game against Oakland. We won that one 5-1, so one goal against uh, Achievers in the last three games. And almost to the trading deadline. And now we're there, so let's see what we can do here. Only one trade so far, just a minor one between Pittsburgh and St. Louis. Only got a couple minutes left in our stream here. Yep, so. I just noticed that, so I'm gonna we'll see what trade we can get going. Gonna Rat go. cats in the chat says suitcase Smith. Suitcase Smith. Yep. One season wonder with the uh, Canucks had a great. He was like the borderline Hart Trophy winner in '74, '75, and then apparently in that off season he insulted the owner of the wife, uh, the or the wife uh, of the uh, Canucks owner. And that was, uh, that was pretty much just the end of his career in Vancouver. And let's see. Uh... Oh, who are you? Who, who are you saying? Oh, Berenson with yep. Boston. How's he doing in this one? Uh, three stars. Well, he's, he's playing a little reg more regularly for them. So who's? They've been, looks like they're sitting, oh wow, Derek Sanderson uh, has not developed at all for the Bruins. Hmm. So he'd be a fun guy to have in LA. Let's uh, see if we can make an offer there and if they'll take that. He'd also be kind of useful for the playoffs this year. Throw Campbell in and yeah, the Bruins, that's right, the Bruins don't have players to move around. Now, do the Bruins have a really bad guy we can take on? As, yeah, they got a few one-stars. Uh, Connie Mag Madigan, one-star, 35 years old, so I'm assuming they're not going to want to hang on to him. And let's try giving them Schuberg. No, I still want a little bit more. I'll try one late round draft pick since they're not incredibly useful to us. Nope, not going for that either. They're going to be difficult here. Try throwing in one more Weak guy for Boston, Balfontaine, one star, 36 years old, and another one of our younger guys. Um, Try Robin Burn. Or let's no, I'll go with Cormier. Uh, don't even remember signing him actually, but oh come on, they won't, they won't, don't want that, don't want that either. I'll throw in a fourth rounder for this, but if, if that isn't uh, going to do it, I'll give up. Oh, finally, they go for that. So, the big trading deadline deal for us is getting Derek Sanderson from the Bruins for three prospects, a couple of picks, and we got a couple of throw-ins that will never, ever play for us. And now watch go Sam watch Sanderson sign with the WHA in a couple of seasons like he did in real life. Ratcast asks in the chat, could you do the same for the 70 Savers pick initial team and expansion draft? And the answer is yeah, yes, you could. But if I was going to do that, I would take the Canucks. <laughs> Fair enough. 
and just setting my roster up for the rest of this season. And I think we are just about done here. Take a look where the standings are. I'm going to run this out. Uh, I think I can get, I'm just going to get this to the end of the year if I can. So it's only going to take a couple of seconds. Whoops, got too many guys up. Next time I didn't send them down, I guess. There we go. And we're creeping above 500. Uh, well, back and forth, it looks like. A little, we get above one game above, and then we lose, and... Uh, fall back and almost to the end of the year and there we go we actually finished first place in the West Division 78 points couple of games above 500 and even finished ahead of an East Division team I think that's a good way to uh, wind up the week I think so as well and while you're wrapping up, I'll just uh, take a look over the stats for the season. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, sign us out. All right. Thank you very much for tuning in to another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. We stream every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash OOTP developments. If you want to talk to us about Franchise Hockey Manager, you can reach out to us on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash franchise hockey manager. You can follow us on Twitter at, at Franchise Hockey. You can find all of our videos archived on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash OTP Developments. Or you can come on down to our official forum, which is OOTPdevelopments.com. Click on that community button, and that'll take you to our forums. Jeff, I don't think I missed anything, did I? No, I think we uh, covered pretty much everything there, and uh, just looking at our stats for this season. Uh, Guy Chiron, 72 point rookie season, so got to be happy about that. And then we'll be back next week with the Modern Wings who are not doing, I don't think they'll be leading their division anytime soon, but uh, probably are a little closer to uh, cup contention than the Kings are, but we're getting there with this team, I think. So, uh, thanks for coming out, everybody, and we will see you in another week.